Hola clase, this is Señora Placid. We're finishing capítulo 3B, ¿Cómo se va? How does one get there? Uh, we're doing part two, grammar and review. So, let's begin. You know, we always have some culture. This is going to be a long video today. You have three grammar topics. So, first let's go through the culture and then please make sure you watch the entire video. So, el metro de la Ciudad de México. So, the subway in the city of Mexico. 4.6 million people uh, daily use the 12 subway lines of the city of Mexico. It's cheap to travel by subway. Uh, one trip costs five pesos, which is like nothing. If you use the metro a lot, you can buy tickets on discount or magnetic cards. During peak hours, uh, there are so many people that uh, some of the wagons are only for men and some for women and children. So, permiso de manejar, your driver's license. En los países hispanohablantes hay diferentes requisitos para conseguir el permiso de manejar. In Spanish-speaking countries, there are different requirements in order to get a driver's license. En todos los países hay que presentar documentos de identidad o certificado médico que te declara que tienes buena salud física y mental. So, in Every country you have to prevent identification documents and medical certification that declares that you're healthy mentally and physically to drive. También hay que aprobar un examen. You also have to take a test. En muchos países, los exámenes son de teoría, escrito y de práctica, manejo. In many countries, the, exam, uh, the tests are written or on theory and practice driving. In Argentina, you can drive a moped at 16 years old and a car at 17. In Spain, you have to uh, you can drive a moped without passengers at 15 and take passengers at 18 and drive a car at 18. All right, and the neighborhood. So, imagina que llegas al casa y no puedes abrir la puerta. So, imagine that you go home and you can't open the door. No hay nadie en casa y no puedes entrar. There's no one at home and you can't enter. Mañana tienes un examen y los libros están en la casa. Tomorrow you have an exam and the books are at home. You don't have money. Uh, you can't make a phone call. You're hungry and you can't buy food. What do you do? So this is not a big problem if you live in a neighborhood in the Spanish-speaking countries. Here the neighbors know each other well. They are friendly and help. If you forget your keys, you can go to the house of your neighbors. And if they can, they help you uh, to enter your house. If you're hungry, they give you something to eat and they let you make a phone call. In Spanish-speaking countries, neighborhood is an institution. The houses of the neighborhood are close to one another's and frequently they're close to a plaza. Normally, there's a market um, in the neighborhood, a movie theater, and small stores to buy food, clothing, or materi school materials. The neighborhood is like an extension of your home, a good place for the family where kids and the older people can play and, and walk and spend time together. All right, grammar and review. In this video, you will learn about two grammar topics. I mean, not two, sorry, three. Direct object pronouns, me, te, nos, irregular affirmative two commands, and present progressive irregular forms. So let's start with number one. Direct object pronouns, me, te, and nos. So in this section of Spanish, you will be able to exchange information about your relationships with friends and family. Pause the video and you must write this entire slide down and then we're gonna go through it together, especially everything that's underlined. So direct object pronouns, me, te, and nos. You know that direct object pronouns replace direct object nouns. The direct object pronouns, lo, la, los, and las can refer to both objects and people. However, the pronouns me, te, and nos, and os refer only to people. Here are all the direct object pronouns and what they mean. Please write these down. And we're definitely gonna be paying attention to me, te, and nos. So. Direct object pronouns receive the action of the verb, what is being acted upon, right? Can I help you? Can you call me? So it is the people receiving the action. So remember that the subject and the verb ending tell who does the action. The direct object pronoun indicates who receives the action. So in this sentence, 
Me ayudas, por favor. Ayudar, conjugated to the to form. Can you help me? Right? Me ayudas. So it is backwards. So you're saying, me, can you help? So make sure that you know that, that instead of coming after the verb like it would in English, it comes before the conjugated verb. Direct object pronouns usually come right before the conjugated verb. When an infinitive, that means a verb that ends in AR, ER, or IR, follows a conjugated verb, the pronoun can be placed before the first verb or attached to the infinitive. So I'll give you an example here. No te entiendo. Right? I don't understand you. What well, you're saying it's, I don't you, I understand. Right? I don't understand you. No te entiendo. This is the yo form. I understand. Te means you. No, don't. Quieren llevarnos al centro. They want to take us to downtown. Notice, now that there's an infinitive, an AR verb, remember infinitives end in AR, ER, or IR, now you can attach it to the end. Or I could have put nos all the way here in the very beginning. But there's an infinitive, and if you can attach it, attach it. Quieren llevarnos al centro. They want to take us downtown. When answering a question, remember to change the direct object pronoun if necessary. So like this, me vas a llamar, are you going to call me? Notice the me goes in the front instead of at the end, like in English. Si, te llamo más tarde. Yes, I'll call you later. Notice, llamo, I'll call, te, you, más tarde. And these go in front, not after. So let's do this activity together. This is actually one of the activities that was assigned to you, and we're going to go through it together. Um, but I need you to know that this looks a lot like your quiz, so please pay close attention. Um, so you're going to either use me, te, or nos, right? So, hoy Manolo llegó tarde a la escuela. He arrived late to school. Complete the conversation between Manolo and Ramon with me, te, or nos. So Ramon is saying, Oye, Manolo, ¿por qué no tomaste el autobús a la escuela esta mañana? Why didn't you take the bus to school this morning? Blank, esperamos en la esquina de tu calle por 10 minutos. So we're saying, we waited for you at the corner of your street for 10 minutes. So we waited for you, right? That's for him. That's what we need. We need te. Te esperamos en la esquina. Lo siento, I'm sorry. Mi padre no blank despertó a tiempo. So we're saying, my dad didn't wake me up on time, right? Mi padre no me despertó a tiempo. He didn't wake me up. So no, I know it doesn't make sense to you. Why wouldn't it be after? But just remember in Spanish, it's before. ¿Y cómo llegaste a la escuela? How did you arrive to school? Tu hermana blank llevó en su coche so, did your sister take you, right? Te llevó en su coche. Did she take you in her car? Si, sí, ella blank llevó a la escuela. Yes, she took me to school. Ella me llevó a la escuela. Yeah, me. Number five, cinco. Ya sabes que repasamos en la primera hora para el examen de mañana. So you know we already reviewed in first period for the test tomorrow. Si, sí, lo sé. Yes, I know. Y no entiendo la materia. And I don't understand the subject. Blank ayudas a estudiar esta noche. Can you help me? Right? So, me ayudas a estudiar esta noche? Lo siento, amigo. I'm sorry, friend. Pero no blank puedo ayudar. But I cannot help you. No te puedo ayudar. Mi familia y yo vamos a la casa de mis, de mis tíos. My family and I are going to the house of my aunts and uncles. They invited us to dinner tonight. Ellos nos invitaron a cenar esta noche. Manolo says, pues, entonces, I'll see you tomorrow. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Entonces, 
te veo mañana. Veo, I'll see, te, you, mañana. Tengo que hablar con Claudia y Teresa. I have to talk with Claudia and Teresa. Estoy seguro que ellos, blank, pueden ayudar. I'm sure that the girls can help me. Me pueden ayudar. All right, so notice, you would, you think you would put it after. You could. Pueden ayudar me. They can help me. But you can also put it before. Que ellas me pueden ayudar. Who are they helping? Me. Right? Who did they invite? Us. So make sure that you know that it's the same thing to us, to me, to him. You just put it in the front instead of at the back. All right. So same thing, right? To take someone to school in the morning. Who takes you to school in the morning? Who takes you? Notice in English, te would be at the back, but here it's in the front. Okay, my parents, they take me to school. So it's weird. You would put parents like right here. I mean, me right here between parents and take. My parents, me take to school. So just know that, all right, that it goes before the conjugated verb. So please write these two sentences down if you have it. All right, number two, irregular affirmative to commands. So you're going to be able to tell someone else what to do and exchange information about getting around a city. So let's begin. To tell someone you address as tu to do something, use a command. So you're telling your friend, your family member, hey, you do this. To form, the, to form the affirmative and formal command of regular or stem-changing verbs, drop the final S of the tu form. Right? Like, tu hablas, habla. You're telling your friend, speak. Tu comes, drop the S, come, eat. You're telling like your little brother, come, eat. Tu pides, drop the S, pide, ask for something. Pide un sandwich de pollo, order a chicken sandwich. Lava los platos, wash the dishes. It's also the same as just using the LAF form of the verb. It's either going to end in an A or E, right? Like O as A, right? The letter A or O S A. These are eight irregular command forms that you're telling someone, say this, D, like tell me, dime, to do or to make. As, like, as la tarea, do the homework. Ir, you say, ve, go. Like, ve a la escuela, go to school. Poner, put, to tell someone to put something, pon. Pon los zapatos, put on your shoes. Salir, go out or leave. I can tell someone, leave from here. Sal de aquí. Ser, to be. If I want to tell you to be good, sé bueno. Or if you're a girl, sé buena. Tener, have. I can tell you to be careful, which in Spanish means has have caution. Ten cuidado. Uh, venir, to come. I can say ven aquí, come here. So I can give it to you in directions, right? ¿Cómo se va a la carretera? How does one get to the highway? Sal de aquí, leave from here, y sigue derecho hasta el tercer semáforo. So, get out of here, sal de aquí, y sigue, that's the LAF form of seguir, continue straight until the third traffic light. So, affirmative commands with direct object pronouns. So, you know that, again, direct object pronouns you can go before the conjugated verb. They can be attached to the an infinitive. Right? You can also do it with commands. Right? So especially the bottom one you need to write down. When you use a pronoun with an affirmative informal command, attach it to the end of the verb. Add an accent to the stressed vowel of the verb unless the verb is only one syllable long. So, preparo la carne? Do I prepare the meat? Si, sí, preparala. Yes, prepare it. And notice the accent appears because without it, it would change the sound. Pongo los vasos en la mesa. Do I put the drinking glasses on the table? 
Si, ponlos ahí. Yes, put them there. Notice I now am attaching. So you can attach a command to the end. So complete the phrases with the appropriate commands. Completa las frases con los mandatos apropiados, appropriate commands. Poner, all right? You got to go back to this. There's a little rhyme to help you remember this. So it goes like this. D as ve, pon sal se, ten ven. So again, you group the first three, group the first, uh, the group the second three, and then ten ven. So, D as ve, pon sal se, ten ven. So one more time. D as ve, pon sal se, ten ven. So let's go back to this. Poner, you have to remember the rhyme. D as ve, pon. Right? Pon el permiso de manejar en tu cartera antes de salir. Put your driver's license in your wallet before leaving. Salir. We have D as ve, pon, sal. Right? Sal temprano para no encontrar mucho tráfico. Leave early to not find a lot of traffic. Ser. D as ve, pon, sal, se. Right? Sé un buen conductor para no recibir multas de la policía. The policía. So be a good driver to not receive tickets from the police. Um, we have tener. D as ve, pon sal se, ten. Ten cuidado, be careful, cuando pasas por las calles estrechas. When you drive through narrow streets. Ir. We have D as... V. Ve despacio por una zona de construcción. Go slowly through a construction zone. So notice these are all commands. I'm telling someone what to do. Hacer. D. As. Right? Haz una pregunta si no sabes dónde queda algo. Ask a question. Right? Or, yeah. Ask a question if you don't know where something is. Decir is D. Di. di la verdad si alguien te pregunta cómo ir a algún lugar. Tell the truth if someone asks you how to get to a place. And D as ve, pon sal se, ten ven. Ven directamente a la casa a las cuatro de la tarde. Go directly to the house at four in the afternoon. All right, and then... This is how you would give commands. Like here's a map and you're trying to get them from the General Hospital to the Zócalo, which is the main plaza in Mexico City, using the subway lines. So you have this line here that takes you to Indios Verdes. And you have this line here that takes you to Villa de Cortes. And these students are using this to give directions. ¿Cómo se va en el metro de el Hospital General al Zócalo? Pues desde el Hospital General toma la línea 3. Y ve hacia Indios Verdes. Baja en Hidalgo y cambia a la línea 2. Ten cuidado. Ve hacia Villa de Cortés y baja en la estación Zócalo. Sal del metro y estás en el Zócalo. So, he says, toma línea 3. Take line 3. Y ve hacia Indios Verdes. And go towards this Indios Verdes. Baja en Hidalgo. Get off in Hidalgo. This stop here. Y cambia a la línea 2. And go on line 2. Ten cuidado. Be careful. Ve hacia Villa Cortés. Go towards Villa de Cortés. And get off. Baja en la estación Zócalo. Sal de metro. Get out of the subway. Y estás en el Zócalo. And you're there. So you should be able to use these commands to tell someone how to get from one place to another. And number three, present progressive, irregular forms. So you're going to exchange information about what is happening and talk and write about what people are doing. All right. So present progressive. To say what is happening right now, you use the present progressive formula. You say a star, which means to be, estoy, I am, estás, you are, está, he or she is, estamos, we are, estáis, y'all are, están, you all are or they are. And if the verb ends in AR, change it to ando. And if the verb ends in ER or IR, change it to yendo. 
So hablar becomes hablando, right? Talking. That's how it works. These work like ing in English. Hacer becomes haciendo, doing, escribir, escribiendo, writing, right? So dormir, durmiendo, sleeping, leer, leyendo, reading. So notice this O changes to a U here and this E change, the I changes to a Y. So I can say, ¿Qué estás haciendo? What are you doing? Estoy leyendo. I am reading. Saying, what are you doing right now at this very moment? These are irregular present participles. So to form the present participle of I are stem changing verbs, the E in the infinitive form changes to I and the O in the infinitive form changes to you. So the C it becomes diciendo, saying, repetir, repitiendo, repeating, servir, sirviendo, serving, dormir, durmiendo, sleeping, pedir, pidiendo, ordering or asking for, seguir, siguiendo, continuing or following, vestir, vistiendo, dressing. In the following ER verbs, the I of yendo changes to Y. Creer, creyendo, thinking or believing. Traer, trayendo, bringing. And leer becomes leyendo, reading. When you use object pronouns with the present progressive, again, you can put the direct object pronouns before the conjugated form of estar or attach them to the present participle. Notice that if a pronoun is attached to the present participle, an accent mark is needed. Write the accent mark over the vowel that is normally stressed in the pre present participle. So, ¿Están ustedes esperando el autobús? Are you all waiting for the bus? Remember, you can replace the bus with it. Si, sí, lo estamos esperando. Yes, we are waiting for it. Or you can say, si, sí, estamos esperando lo. Yes, we are waiting for it. You can attach it to the ando or yendo, but notice esperándolo. You put the accent on the A to keep the same sound in esperando. So you need the first one, which is the form of a star to be, right? Estoy, estás, está, estamos, estáis, están. And you need the second one, which is the ando or yendo ending to say ing. So, completa las frases con la forma correcta del presente progresivo. El señor está leyendo una mapa de la ciudad. The man is reading a map of the city. You want to say the kids are sleeping underneath of a tree. Remember, dormir changes to the weird you one. Están durmiendo debajo de un árbol. So, the children, they are sleeping underneath of a tree. El perro, we want to say, is following the kids, right? This E changes to an I. And you use está, he is, right? El perro está siguiendo a los niños. The dog is following the kids. Make sure you write these down if you haven't. All right, and a little review. So I can listen to and understand driving advice. So Gabriel's father is teaching him how to drive. Listen as he cautions uh, Gabriel about what to do. Do you think they're driving on a highway or just around the town? So let's see. Ten cuidado, hijo. Estamos en una zona escolar. Ay, espera. Hay peatones, hijo. Más despacio, por favor. Mira el semáforo. So they're at a school zone um, to make sure they be careful and that there are pedestrians and a traffic light. So take a look at some driving rules on a website from Mexico. Ve muy despacio en una zona escolar. Go very slowly in a school zone. Sigue detrás de ocho, otro coche aproximadamente el largo de dos, car de dos coches. So... Follow behind another car approximately the length of two cars, right? Follow. 
entra con precaución a un cruce de calles con un semáforo amarillo. So enter with precaution into an intersection of streets with a yellow traffic light. So you need to know that entra is the he, she form, L-A-A form of entrar. Sigue of seguir and ve of ir, to go. So you're saying go, follow, enter. So, and then you should be able to tell someone how to get from one location to your school to another. And that's it. You'll do activity 12, the one we did together, and guided grammar activity, irregular affirmative two commands. And then you have these pruebas, direct object pronouns, present progressive, and all of capítulo 3B. Thank you.